As far as investigative journalism goes in our dear country, Kenya, uh, KTN yeah, has always remained uh, head and shoulders above the rest. Okay? Uh, this TV station has had a very long tradition of uh, investigative uh, pieces. Yeah? Uh, right from the days of uh, John Alan Namu and uh, Muhammad Ali, who is incident incidentally now the legislator for Nyali in Mombasa. Okay, they've had a long tradition. Now, the latest documentary that they've released, an investigative piece, yeah, uh, which is under a new series they've launched called The Lead, and which they've titled very appropriately, Logged Out Forever, is just, <laughs> is just uh, game changing. That's what I can label it. The main focus is to bring out new clues and uh, new answers concerning the death that shocked Kenyans the most in the year 2017, the death of one Christopher Chege Msando, yeah, which happened barely a week before the general elections of August 8th this year. Now what I've done is uh, I've put a link at the end of this video that you'll be able to go straight and watch that documentary in case you've not seen it yet. It's very informative, very interesting, very well done, yeah. And uh, it actually makes it very obvious that the suspicions which Kenyans have had all along as to who is behind and who was behind the uh, uh, torture and uh, killing of uh, Chris Musando, yeah. Uh, Kenyans have never really doubted. Most Kenyans uh, point in one direction. And this documentary or this investigative piece just confirms Kenyans' worst fears. The biggest thing which, which uh, this documentary confirms is the fact that uh, there are a lot of uh, leads, yes, which the police have completely ignored, meaning that the police have not really been interested in solving this mystery and finding the killers of Chris Musando, yeah? And the reason for this kind of behavior or attitude is very obvious. The government has no interest in getting the real killers of Bonham Sando uh, to book. They're not interested in prosecuting the real killers of this man. That should be very obvious. Because right from CCTV cameras to the mobile phone, uh, you know, uh, all these uh, uh, clues which came out of the murder, uh, just picking any one of them and falling it to the end would have very quickly brought, uh, if not all, at least some of those involved in the killing of uh, Chris Musando. Now what I've done is that I've followed up on uh, some of the new evidence presented in this documentary and uh, my findings are in a very special report that I've produced for my Club 1999 members, yeah, including eyewitness reports that confirm yeah, the identity of one of the people involved in the killing of Chris Musando. And they do this very, very conclusively. Yeah? If you're not a member of my club 1999, it's very easy. Just uh, use the email address you see on your screens right now, yeah? and you'll get an automated response, and you'll be a member pup. Yeah? Six months membership is only 1,999 Kenyan shillings, or $19.99. Yeah? That's why the club is called 1999. Yeah? Anyway. Just by following the CCTV cameras uh, evidence in this case, I mean, when you have a lone person, a lone driver driving uh, Chris Musando's vehicle on the night of his death, yeah, and this person is actually wearing Chris Musando's shirt, yeah, and this person actually pulls the sunscreen down, you know, the screen in front of the car that is normally used to screen the driver from the sun, you pull that down at night when there's no sun, yeah. Uh, which obviously means you're trying to shield your face from the CCTV cameras, yeah? And by the way, bear this in mind, not everybody knows where those CCTV cameras are, yeah? Not everybody is aware of uh, the capabilities of these CCTV cameras, yeah? And therefore that in itself is a major clue, a very, very major clue as uh, to the identity of the driver of um, Sandos car on that night. Yeah, at least where he comes from, you know, where, which direction in the Republic of Kenya that person comes from, or rather which organization. Yeah, that should be very obvious from that particular case. 
And I would strongly recommend uh, the piece I've done. Uh, we have brought out a lot of uh, these things that may not actually be said on a public channel. Yeah, uh, that should be very interesting and that should be very instructive to anybody. Yeah, uh, it's all in that uh, documentary available available to Club 1999 members. Yeah, and you can be one in a second. Yeah. It is a hope and prayer of many Kenyans that uh, as we close the year 2017, that in the year 2018, there will be some justice for the murder of Chris Musando. Yeah? That as the widow of Chris Musando said so openly uh, on, on national television, his murder will not be in vain. She has refused. Okay? And uh, we also have his mother, <laughs> who is still speaking very, very bitterly, Indeed, in the, docu in the KTN documentary, she says if she found, if she was able to discover who killed her, her son, her last born son, yeah, what she'd do to him is just eat him with her teeth. What? Yeah, that's what she says in this uh, <laughs> very interesting KTN uh, investigative piece. Chris Msando's sister says, the wound that has been left in her heart, she will carry with her to her grave. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, the Chris Musando murder is still very fresh. Yeah. On the minds of uh, his family, those who are close to him, those who loved him, and still also very fresh to Kenyans. Yeah. Who have just come out of a very, very um, uh, fraudulent uh, general election process. Yeah, that has culminated in the coronation of uh, a leader for Kenyans, who most Kenyans reject outright. Yeah, so definitely Chris Msando is not, uh, and his death is not going to go away very soon. Not in a hurry, I can assure you. Yeah, until next time, this is Chris Kumekuja.